Hi, everyone. So today we are on page 184, and uh, we're almost done with this book. So please make sure if you have not picked up the Algebra 2 books, remember they're the purple color, make sure you go get those. Okay. Um, so before we get into this, let me read the learning targets. I forgot to do that in class today. Sorry. All right. So today we're going to use a discriminant in the quadratic formula to determine the number of roots or zeros. Also, we're going to use a quadratic formula to determine the roots or n zero. I feel like I just read that. Oh, I would just use a discriminant for the first one. The second one is just use a quadratic formula. My bad. Um, determine whether a solution is, a ra is rational or irrational when performing operations with rational and irrational numbers. So the two things that we're going to talk about here is quadratic formula, which you should be already familiar with. If you're not, go look at yesterday's lesson. Oh, Thursday's lesson, not yesterday, um, <clears throat> the previous lesson, and uh, the discriminant is what we're learning today. Okay, so now this is page 184. So Javier here is doing his work, and we're like, okay, so if you have not figured out what the issue is, don't peek, just pause and then do it. But if you remember, we looked at the ones, uh, at uh, A, the B, and the C, yep, Javier did it all correctly, plugged it in all right. The only thing we noticed here was that from, uh, well, let's look here. So from 196 to 70, uh, 196 minus 76 is 120. If you look at from 120 to here, right? If you notice this right here, uh, why did he do that? That's so weird. Like, why would you rewrite 120 as 30 times four? And the reason why is because uh, he, uh, Javier noticed that the square root of four, the, uh, 120 has a perfect square in it, which is the square root of four, right? Because what's the square root of four? That's two. Okay, that's where the two came from. Okay. So another way to do that, remember, is uh, we learned this before. So 120 divide that by what is it called? Uh, a number. So we'll go with two. Just divide up prime numbers. So two goes into 120 60 times, and then what goes into 60? All two because it's even. So two goes into 60 30 times. Well, let's just keep on going. Divide that by two, it's 15. Okay, it's not even. So what is this one? Oh, well, we could say five, because five goes into 15, three times. And then the last one, three goes into three, one time. So we do that until we get to a one. You know, do we have any doubles here? Right, and you're like, oh yes, right here. If you pick these two, that's fine, it doesn't matter. So this one is the thing that goes outside the, remember if you get married, you go outside of the house. And then square root, what's left over? So two times five times three, which is gonna be 30, okay? That's the same thing as what he's doing here. If you can recognize the perfect squares, do it this way. Okay, that's fine. Either way is okay, as long as you're simplifying the radical. Okay, that is assumed that you're gonna be doing that, okay? So then once you get here, uh, a lot of you guys noticed that 14 divided by two is seven. But uh, a lot of you guys said, oh, well, he didn't divide the two with the other term. You have to do that. That's why it's all over, not just for the 14, right? So that is, should have been two divided by two which is just uh, one square root 30 or just square root of 30. Okay, um, remember, if you have two root 30, divide that by two. Uh, the ones that are outside of the radical, you can uh, cancel those out. You wouldn't be able to 30 and the two because this two is not part of the square root. It doesn't have a square root over it. So that's why that's a little different. So if it was, I mean, you're never gonna see this here because we don't have radicals on the bottom. But if you were to have like, if this was like a square root of two, this two and this square root of two are not the same thing, right? Remember, square root of two is like 1.414, 1 something like that. So, but these are both in the square root, like the 30 and the two. So this, you could uh, reduce that to, to root 15, since they're both inside the square root, okay? Hope that didn't confuse you more. But anyways, that is a thing. All right, so we know that. So the question was, is identify the error Javier made when determining the zeros. He did not divide by two. Uh, he did not divide two root 30 by two. He should divide everything by two, all the terms, but he only divided the first term, not the second term. All right, and then this would be the actual equation right here. X is equal to seven plus or minus square root of 30. All right, yay. Uh, also, please note that when I say, give me an exact solution. So on a test, I'm asking you, give me this exact solution. You should not be giving me decimals that are rounded, okay? No rounding going on at all. So leave the solutions in exact form means uh, not to estimate any radical values with rounded decimals. In other words, leave it in radical form. 
okay? Leave it in radical form, write that down, okay? Um, so use the quadratic formula to determine uh, determine the zeros for each function given. Okay, well, we just did it for A, right? And so if you notice right here, um, we first set it equal to zero, right? Because that's what we do with our roots. Um, and then it's a, just a good reminder, do you have to? Not necessarily, but it's good for you to remember that in case um, you come up across one that is not equal to zero, which you will see. Um, and then remember, figure out our A's, B's, and C's. Um, if you notice right here, we said our A was negative two. Please do not put in the X, leave the X alone, okay? Leave your X alone, <laughs> all right? So it's just the number in front, okay? So I'm trying to keep all these numbers the same color. And then your B is going to be the number in front of X, uh, the X, so it's just the negative three part. And then your C is just the number that's by itself. So literally, if we were going to, so if, let's pretend, okay? Uh, we're going to just erase our mind from this. I'm going to just say, what if the equation was 5x minus 2x squared plus 10? Let's just say, okay? And then what would be my a? And some people may be tricked and go, oh, it's 5. No, it's not 5. It's the number that's in front of the x squared. Remember the a is in front of the x squared? It does not matter where the x squared is. It's in front of that number, uh, in front of that variable. So in this case, a would be negative 2. B would be the thing that's in front of the X, the coefficient in front of the X, which is five, and then C would be 10. 10 is always a number by itself. Like even if 10 were to be like, let's say it's not here. Let's say we put it like here, right? Even like this, right? C would still be 10 because it's the number that's by itself. It doesn't matter where it is. It just it's not always like the last one. Just normally um, when you use in math books or just in, for, uh, in equations in general, we normally put it in standard form, which is where the exponent, the biggest exponent is first and then smaller and then smaller and smaller. Okay, so that's where we have the x squared, then just the regular x, and then the, the thing with no x, where x to the zero power, if you guys remember that from a couple of times ago. So that's that. Okay, let me just erase this for you. All right, now going back to our regularly scheduled program. So we're gonna literally just plug it into the equation or the formula. So remember, this is the quadratic formula right here. That's a Q, quadratic formula. You can use this anytime you're trying to solve for, uh, for an X that is uh, X that is a quadratic, okay? If that's why it's called a quadratic formula, not the linear formula, because it does not work for linear things, okay? It just doesn't work. So, uh, now it makes me want to try them, see if it works. If a is equal to zero, fake No, because it wouldn't work because if a is zero, then you're dividing by zero. That's another way to break your calculator, right? If you divide by zero, like if you go five divided by zero, do you see this? Math error, errors happen, right? I broke my calculator, darn it. <laughs> All right, um, so yeah, so I guess it would not work. So I answered my question right now. All right, so literally anywhere you see the purple, right, the Bs, we're plugging those in, plugging negative three in for the Bs. Please note, did I, I did not highlight the negative on the outside because that is not part of the B. So that's what we have it on the outside. So in the B right here is negative three. So it's like a double negative, okay? So please make sure you're doing that. And then once you do that, what I really strongly recommend you doing, don't put this whole thing in the equation, like this whole like quadratic formula in the equation. Just do this inside of the square root part first. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to get my Desmos out and I'm going to just move this over. I'm gonna use this as a calculator since you can't really see my calculator very well. So this is probably easier to do. So I'm gonna go parentheses, negative three and parentheses. Oops. Square root of two. Oh, good, it's nine. Yay. Minus four times. Oh, I don't like to do that. I'm just going to go times uh, negative 2 times 7. Look, it's 65. And if you notice, please do this on your calculator right now. If you did not do it in class or you were not in class, please take your calculator or use your phone and try this, okay? Because if you cannot get it on your calculator, bad days for you, okay? Or another thing I would try, if you don't have any of those things, like none of those are seeming to work for you, go to Desmos and do that. It doesn't matter. Pick one of those things. 
Okay, and if you still can't figure it out, come talk to me during office hours. And so some of you guys may be getting a different answer. Like, what if you guys, oh, we'll get there someday. I can do this. What if you guys don't have that parenthesis? If you guys forgot the parenthesis there, notice that I'm getting the answer 47. If you got 47, that means you left out that parenthesis. Super important because remember, if you're just doing negative three squared, notice what the answer is. It is now nine or sorry, negative nine, where before it was positive nine, because you're actually doing three times three, and then adding the negative in front later on, right? Because um, you're not including the negative in with the square. Like calculators don't know that. You need to be very specific, okay? So this negative square root of three and parentheses negative three square, square, square. I'm gonna try this one more time. So negative three squared is different than parentheses negative three squared. It's two different things. Okay, so please make sure that you put in those parentheses and it's not equal to 47, but it's equal to 65. Okay, now knowing that, we're just going to plug it all in. So we got, we know the negative of negative three is three, plus or minus square root of 65. I don't know why that's such a long square root. I don't know what I was thinking that I was going to do there. Let me just change that because make it look a little bit better. Okay, so square root of 65 and two times negative two is negative four. All right. And then we, when we, so that's literally like our answer. Um, the only thing I would say is that negative four, uh, we don't like negatives on the bottom. In general, mathematicians don't like negatives on the bottom. Uh, standard practice is that you bring it to the top. Basically, you're multiplying by one. So I don't think I really explained this in class very well. I just say, just bring it to the top. Well, why does that work, right? So let me show you why that works. Um, so if I go three plus or minus uh, square root of 65, over negative four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just multiply by one, okay? And if I multiply by one, am I changing the value? No, because like five times one is five. Uh, two times one is five. <laughs> two times one is two. Oh shoot, <laughs> right? So I'm just gonna multiply by a special one. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply by negative one over negative one, right? Because it was negative one divided by negative one. One, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply straight across and basically, I'm just going to distribute this negative to both of these guys. So this is going to be negative 3 plus or minus. Technically, this would be minus, minus or plus. But minus or plus, same thing as plus or minus. So I'm just going to leave it as plus or minus. That looks better. And then, so that's why it's going to, that's why it looks like the second term does not change. Because we're already accounting for both, both signs, right? We want both of them anyway. So it doesn't matter if we multiply by negative 1. And then it's going to be over negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. Okay, and that's what I mean by just bring it to the top. Okay, it's not just a random trick that you can do. It's just we're basically just multiplying by one, right? Negative one over negative one to make that negative go to the top. Okay, but in my brain, I'm just like, move it to the top. Okay, um, but hopefully that's a better explanation because I don't think I did a very good job in class. Sorry. Um, hopefully you're watching this video so you get that. All right, so if we're looking at the next page, it was 185 on Lauren. Uh, let me see, where's my mouse? All right, so for Lauren, what was her mistake, right? And if you notice right here, there was a lot of, some kids who noticed, they're like, oh wait, it's not equal to zero. Remember what I said, always equal to zero? This is equal to three. You can't say that A is one, B is negative seven, and C is negative eight, because it's not even equal to zero. So how do we get it equal to zero? You can see the word there. Subtract three on both sides, right? And then so you would get X minus seven X, minus 11 is equal to zero. Now it's equal to zero, happy days. So if you wanna write on here, oh, that doesn't look very good. Always has to equal zero. And I should technically say when solving for x, when solving for x. And you know what I mean by x, right? Because uh, it could be y or p or q or m or t, it does whatever the variable that is there, okay, um, that you're trying to solve for. Normally it's x. All right, so um, now what, what does that change? Does it change the a, b, or c or all of them? Maybe like, well, not all of them. It should, it would just change this one to negative 11 right here, right? And so this one would be negative 11. Oh, only one place, okay. So then that actually changes this guy right here. Right, so instead of being a 32, what would it be? Uh, negative 
times negative is positive. Four times 11, it's gonna be 44, okay? So 44 plus 49 is now 80, 93. So instead of 81, it should be 93, right? And then if you notice 93, uh, can, we, can we simplify that some more? So let's try. So 93, I know three goes in there for sure, right? So three goes into nine three times, three goes into three one time. Ooh, this 31, 31 is a prime number. Three and 31, that, that's all I got. So literally our answer is gonna be uh, x equals seven plus or minus square root of 93 over two. Like that's it. Okay, oh, I also totally forgot, thanks. Thanks for reminding me guys. Is classify the solutions as rational or irrational. Remember, rational means fractional, right? But just because it looks like a fraction doesn't mean this, it's a fraction, right? Because remember, you cannot have these radical thingies. Anytime you see this radical thing is not a perfect square, which it's not, this is definitely going to be irrational. You may think that it's irrational to think that way, but it's not. All right, same thing right here. Um, negative three plus or minus square root of 60 over four. That is, again, not really a fraction, right? Because when we have this radical there. So um, yes, this is also irrational. Okay, all right, moving on. All right. This guy right here. This is, what would have happened if we, like, we let Lauren just do this, right? So she just graphed this, the x plus, x minus seven, x minus eight, and set that equal to three. Okay, so I said the f of x is equal to the left-hand side. G of x, do you see the colors? G of x is just gonna equal three, okay? Um, so basically what I did here was I factored, because I knew it was factored. I just could see the numbers. I'm like, ooh, I think it's factored. So I tried factoring, right? And I got a one and one for the first term. And then for the second one, I got one in negative eight, right? Because one times one is one. One times eight or negative eight is negative eight. And then if I add them up, I would get negative seven because I wanted a negative seven. Technically, I did the negatives last because I just, it, I like doing them last. You can do it whenever you want. Okay? I, I don't like thinking about it too hard. I just do it at the end. I get one and eight and go, okay, which one of these has to be negative so that I could get a negative seven? I go, oh, it has to be negative eight. So that's when I added the negative in there. Oh, I see the color. Okay, and then we go straight across. So it's gonna be uh, x plus one, remember x plus one, and then x minus eight. Okay, and then I just solve for the roots, which is gonna be one and negative one and eight. Anyway, so I solve this, and then I, this is gonna be the equation like that. That's what it's gonna graph out to be like. Uh, this g of x is equal to three. Only time y is equal to three is a straight line at y is equal to three. Right, and the question is, what do those intersections mean? All right, and I couldn't go over in this class, this in class, but what do those intersections mean? Notice the intersection is like a little before negative one and a little after eight. Right, if you think about it, it should make sense because if you notice right here, what are the roots? Because I this is the actual graph. This is the if you solve, so this is I'm gonna call this h of x is equal to x squared minus seven x minus 11. That's if when we subtract out the three, right? Subtract three on both sides to get it equal to zero. And if you notice right here, the roots are those roots right here. Remember was, we said a little bit before negative one, right? So it's, it's smaller than negative one. And right after the eight, look, it's right after the eight. This is actually, that intersection is the actual roots for this guy right here. Okay, that's, that's what that is. But do you really want to do it this way? Right, that if you want to like to graph one of them, figure out that line and figure out what that equate. No, that's too much work. So it's just much better to just subtract out the three and then just solve it. It's much easier. All right. So there we go. That was what I was trying to explain in class. And we're gonna skip this page. And then here. So um, if you did not do this yet, we're gonna now try and round them. Okay, this is a good practice for your calculator usage. Very good practice. Okay, so we're gonna round it to the nearest hundredths, which is how many decimal places? I always think to myself, how many zeros does 100 have? You better know the answer, two. So that's two decimal places. If it was thousands place, how many zeros does 1,000 have? Three, so that's three decimal places, okay? Um, so here, let's do, oh, let's do the one with the decimal. Yes, super fun. All right, if you have, okay, you probably didn't do this one. 
So I would pause right now, do a thing, right? Do this and then press play and check your answer. All right, pause. All right, so I'm assuming you paused it and you already did a thing, right? You already figured it out or we're stuck maybe, and which is okay, well, that's what we have this video for, right? And so this is equal to zero, we're setting it equal to zero, yay. And then what else do we need to do? Okay, we need to figure out the A, B, or C, so let's, or A, B, and C, sorry, not or C. So A is, remember, in front of the X squared is just two, solamente dos, okay? There is no like X's in there, it's not like two X squared, no. Okay, leave your X behind, okay? It's in the past, right? It's just the coefficients, guys. Okay, so this would be 10, and this is going to be negative 1.02. I'm interested as to what that 1.02 or negative 1.02 is going to do to our equation. All right, so now we have all that. Now we're ready. Okay, X equals. Remember the song? X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, there's the song again. All right, so we're literally just plugging that in. So negative 10 plus or minus square root b squared. I personally just do the square already in my head. Okay, so b squared is 100 because it's just one less thing for me to rewrite again. Uh, minus 4a, which is 2, c, which is negative 1.02. Ooh, come back in the house. All over 2 times 2. Okay. Doesn't have the same one, huh? All right, so then from here, we're just gonna do, I'm gonna do that inside the square root part, okay? So we're gonna go one more time, take out your calculators or decimals or whatever it is that you have. We're gonna put this in here. So 100, oop, that's a thousand, minus four times two times negative 1.02. And you get, I'm just gonna continue this, oh, darn it, uh, 108, Wait, 16. Okay, quick tip here, guys. Do not round here. Okay, do not round here. You round at the very end. If you round too early, you're not going to get accurate answers, okay, because you're already rounding from the beginning. You're not using accurate numbers to begin with. Okay, so don't round until you get to the very end. All right, and that's going to be over four. Okay, now remember it says that we're going to round to nearest hundreds. So literally, Straight up, we're just going to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go negative 10. Now, we're going to use the plus first. I like using the plus first since it's on top. So it's going to be negative 10 plus, and then the square root, SQRT, there we go, 108.16. Okay, and then I'm going to put divide. Oh, what I would do on this one, well, normally if you have a calculator, I would just push enter. Okay, and then you divide by four. So you don't have to put in the parentheses. But on this one, I don't really have that option that much. So I'm just gonna put N parentheses and it automatically, notice how it does both, it puts parentheses around the whole thing. So, Cause I just don't wanna like go all the way back to the front, put parentheses all the way back to the back and it's too much. So divide by four. And what do you notice? What? We don't even have to round it, it's exact. Um, so it's just gonna be 0.1, okay? And then we're gonna do the second one. So what I'm gonna do is just to make it, this is the kind of nice thing, that not the kind of, the very nice thing about using Desmos, is you can literally control C for copy, control V for paste. Okay, that's universal for almost everything, okay? Um, Microsoft Word uh, for anything on, if you're trying to copy something, control C, and then control V to paste. All right, so we just wanna take out this plus and change it to a minus. And what do we have there? Look at that negative 5.1. These are our two answers. So at negative 0.1 and negative 5.1, I, I did it wrong. Right? That's where it's going to be. Okay? That's what your roots are going to be. Looks like it's going to be open up, open up because of A is positive, right? It's going to look something like that. My y-intercept right here, easy, right? Y-intercept is negative 1.02, right? See how I got all the things? Could I figure out the vertex? I could, I could figure, I know the AOS, right? The AOS is literally just this guy right here, this guy with over this guy. Right? That's literally my AOS right here, right? So I could find my AOS, oh, I already have it. It's negative 10 over four, reduced down to negative five over two, right? And then just plug that back into the equation 
to get the vertex part if we if we were going to graph it but we're not so we're going to just leave it at that all right so it says uh and classify them as either rational or irrational is this rational or irrational i know it's in decimal but does it stop yeah a point one it was literally point one right so you can this is definitely called rational and anything that stops like that is we can write it as a uh, fraction or if it repeats if it's a repeating decimal like point three 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 yeah, that's one third right and um so this one remember we could write this as one tenth fraction five and one tenth or i should say negative yeah these are all fraction that's fractionable okay we can all fractionate them <laughs> it's a word all right so reflecting on the different quadratic functions we have solved today so far, how many zeros does each quadratic function have? Oh, quadratic function in this lesson have? So far two. Do all quadratic functions have two zeros? Okay, this technically you would probably say no, right? Because there are times when like it equals to, um, like we only get one answer, right? Remember we got a one answer before? Let me go over to here on the right. So notice right here when we had this one answer thing going on, right it only crossed at one time right and then there are times when it doesn't cross at all but we'll get into that okay and then um so you if you said no in here that's totally fine right because you're not wrong right um uh and why do you think the quadratic function could have no zeros you a little picture here what if it never reaches the x-axis right then what then we're screwed <laughs> i'm just kidding um and could a quadratic function have more than two zeros can we draw this so that it crosses the x-axis more than two times? Yeah, I don't think so. So since it only has two arms, right? But there is one if you, uh, like when we go into the next less, uh, next unit, well, briefly, um, but we'll, we'll talk about what if it goes down like this? Ooh. So uh, one thing that I had said in, I think, one of my classes is that it, this, this exponent right here actually tells you the number of roots you would have the max number of roots so this one is two this one is three roots so this is actually cubic right it's a type of a cubic kind of like equation because you would have three roots max okay and um but we'll talk more about that later we don't have to do that right now so and if you guys know this uh, this is making sense of the discriminant and um we've already been using the discriminant but just not in a very math um math we didn't have a lot of method to that madness. I'm sorry, I couldn't say the word. Um, but if you notice right here, if you take a look at these three, um, what are they called? These three graphs right here. Um, notice right here, there's like one, it intersects right at one point right there. Here, it intersects at two, uh, the parabola intersects the x axis two times, right? So this one has like one root here. This one has two roots here. And this guy over here, the no roots, does not even cross even one time, not even once, none, zero. Okay, it's like levitating off the ground. Okay, that's what it's doing. So um, if you notice right here, we did the A's, B's, and C's because we wanted to use a quadratic formula to solve these. And um, so, I mean, technically you can just solve them like algebraically, like set x squared equal to zero, the square root both sides kind of thing. But there's something that we want to show you. Okay, so that's what we're going to use the quadratic formula. And um, so A, B, and C. So notice the B and the C are both zero because why? There's no excess. There's no regular number that we're adding, right? So if we're not adding any numbers, that's literally plus zero. Okay. And we're not, if we're adding, if how many X's do we have? We're like, well, there's no X's. Then it's literally zero times X. What is zero times X? Zero. Okay. So here, um, there, there was some misconception about this. Um, a negative one being b but notice it is not in front of an x so remember it's always a constant number so it is uh, going to be c c is equal to negative one here and also c is equal to one over here on the third one all right now we're going to do the quadratic formula for all three of them if you haven't done that go do a thing oh, wait. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> all right and then from here what we're going to do is notice what is the same and different about them right the same things, zero, the plus or minus, and the two, right? That's the same for all of them. 
the thing that the one thing that is different that is making a difference is that what's inside the square root right because here the square root is zero so notice what are we adding we're actually literally adding nothing we're adding subtracting nothing so how many answers would that give us just one that's why we have like this one root here here we're actually adding or subtracting this two right so that's why we get that we're going two to the right and two to the left okay never mind this two divided by two which is one my bad so this should have been one to the right and one to the left right and our aos is just zero so that's why it's literally plus one negative one okay we got two because we're actually adding subtracting something here what if it's negative right we're like okay so on your calculator actually i'll do it on desmos so you can actually see what i'm doing so on our calculator actually let me just really pull back guys i'm going to say square root of negative four <gasps> what? broke a calculator broke desmos Desmos is done. <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? It's undefined, right? Which means we can't do it because literally what we're asking is, because if we do the square root of four, we know what that is, right? Because we're asking ourselves, well, what, what number when you multiply it by itself will give you four? And you're like two, because two times two is four. So then what, what number when you multiply by itself will give you a negative four? And you're like, well, negative two? And then I'll be like, well, negative two times negative two is positive four. So that would not give me a negative four. It gives me a positive four. So this one would also be the negative two, right? So then what, what could that be? And then you're like, well, one of them has to be positive. One of them has to be negative. That's the only way we get negative numbers, a negative number there, right? And so we're going to actually, dun, 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 we're going to learn about this tomorrow, okay? And some of you guys may already know, some of you guys ruined it before, but that's okay. Um, we will talk about that later. But if you notice right here, it, when it is negative, notice there's no roots. That's why we're not finding like a real solution here. Like it's not working out for us because literally it does not cross the x-axis. So like the calculator is like, I don't even know what to do with this, right? Because it doesn't even cross. You're like, well, how many sisters do you have? If you have no sisters, you're like, well, I don't got any sisters. They're like, bring your sister out here. We're like, but I, I got no sisters, right? Like it doesn't make any sense, right? Because We'll talk about that tomorrow. Talk about that. So, um, oh, we talked. So, what's inside? So, remember what's inside that square root is the thing that determines the thing that we're trying to, like how many roots it's going to be, right? I notice if it's zero, that means we're literally not adding or subtracting anything else from the AOS, right? So, it's going to be one root. And if it's positive, then that's going to be two roots because we're adding and subtracting, right? And if it's negative, then we're like, question, question. It never crosses, right? That's what we call a discriminant. What, where we're getting, where have you seen this before? B squared minus 4AC. That doesn't want to make you say all over 2A, <laughs> right? It's literally, oh, let me go all the way back. So if you look at the quadratic formula again, it's the stuff inside the square root, which is what we said makes the difference, right? So that's all we're doing. We're just taking the stuff inside the square root, right? B squared minus 4AC. And we know if it's negative, that's gonna give us no real roots, right? There's no roots, there's no zeros, right? If it's uh, equal to zero, then it is one unique root, right? Which we call a double root. Why do we call it a double root? Because literally the answer is zero plus square root of zero, which is zero. And then zero minus square root of zero, which is again, zero. So zero comes up twice when we do that. That's what we call it a double root, okay? Um, but we only just say zero because it's redundant to say zero and zero. Uh, when you go up into the higher levels, you will say oh, maybe even like unit two or unit three. We would say zero multiplicity, so M-U-L-T, multiplicity of uh, two. Because if you know anything about multiplicity, think of it like, like it repeats itself. Like how many times does it actually happen? Well, like it happens two times. So they so we just say zero molt two. Learn something else that's new. And if you watch this video, I'll know in unit three when it comes up a little bit, or maybe next quarter, quarter three. That's a while away. So we're gonna go. This is literally the same thing that we were just talking about. You could take a, a look at it again. All right. So here on page 190, um, this is going to be talking about it says use a discriminant to determine the number of real roots and then solve for the roots, okay? So here we did the first one, 
we set it equal, well, in our brains, we set it equal to zero. We set A is equal to two, B is equal to 12, C is equal to negative two. Okay, we're doing just the discriminant part. If you did not do this, stop and do it, okay? So it's gonna be, it's literally gonna be B squared, I'm gonna just write up here, so B squared, minus 4ac. That's the that's underneath the square root, right? We're not including the square root. Does not count. Okay? So it's going to be uh 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times -2. Okay? If you just write this out and then plug it into your calculator and give me the answer, that's fine. So you an your you answer <laughs> your answer should be 160. That means it's that's positive and remember what we said before? What do we say? That means if it's positive, that means it could plus or minus it. So we got two real roots going on. Okay, so we know we're going to just plug it now into our quadratic formula, which is a little bit easier now because we did inside the square root. So negative 12 plus or minus square root of 160. Remember this 160? I, you know, instead of doing it all over again, I'm just going to just, I already know what the answer is, so I'm just going to plug in 160 uh, over 2 times 2, right? 2 times A. And then I know it's the 160. I'm like, ooh, that 160 I know has a perfect square in it. So I just divide the 160 by two a whole bunch of times. Two goes into 160 80 times. What goes into 80? Two goes into 80 40 times. What goes into 40? Two. And then so on until I got to one, right? And I noticed there are two pairs right there, right? So that's going to be two, uh, two times two, which is four on the outside square root. And then the two and the five are left over. They stay at home, remember? So that's just going to be 10 on the inside. So that's how I got this four root 10 here. Okay, I just simplified it. If you want to think about it like this, the way uh, Javier was doing it, if you got 160, you can say, well, I know that's definitely 16 times 10. Why in the world would I pick 16 times 10? Because I know that 16 is a perfect square, right? Because what's 16? Square root of 16? It's 4. What's the square root of, well, it's just going to be square root of 10 because it's not a perfect square. So either way you do that, that's perfectly fine. If you want to do the factor tree way, do it that way. It doesn't matter as long as you don't miss all the numbers on there. All right, so then from there, I notice, oh wait, four goes into both of these two guys. It goes into 12, negative 12 and the four, right? So that's where we simplify this to negative three plus or minus square root of 10. I'm gonna just leave it like that, okay? And um, well, actually, let me just, if I was to ask you to round it to the nearest thousands place, I usually like using thousands place. So round to nearest, Ah, I can't write it. Because I feel like you should know that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our calculator. We're going to go literally negative 3 plus square root of 10. Okay, you are not going to write plus or minus because your calculator does not understand that. Okay, this calculator will interpret that to be a negative, right? It does not understand that. Um, and so it's going to be, I'm going to round three decimal places. So it's going to be 0. 0.162. That stays as a two because right next to it is a two. So it's closer to the two than it is to the three. Okay, so 0. 0.162. So this would be 0. 0.162. And the other answer would be when we subtract it, I'm going to just change that, and that's going to be negative 6.162. There we go. All right, so that would be my rounded answer. This is my exact answer. This is my approximate answer. Okay, so I will tell you, and if I don't tell you which one to do, then I would just automatically do the exact answer. Okay, exact answer is the better. There's a lot of people who miss approximating it just because they're rounding wrong. Like if you made that a three instead, that's wrong. You made a mistake, right? You're not getting a four, right? Uh, exact answer is a lot more safe if you're not comfortable with rounding, okay? But if I don't specifically state uh, like which way to do it, I will accept both answers. All right, so uh, again, if you haven't done this before, please make sure that you uh, try it out. We're doing the discriminant first, okay, and then we're trying to see. So if when we did that, we got negative four as our answer for the discriminant. Remember, if it's negative, that means inside the square root is a negative, and then what? It's no real roots, right? We don't have any real roots, okay? Um, so 
yeah, this is what the answer would look like. We're just gonna leave it like that. Tomorrow we'll find out how to write that better. But for today, that's what we got. All right, uh, one more thing here. Let me just try one more problem in case. So we're gonna do, let's do F. Why? Because, why not? Um, so if you want, if you need more practice, this is the time to do that. So try it out, press pause. So A is equal to nine, B is equal to 12, C is equal to four, right? And we're gonna do our B squared minus four AC part. So this is a discriminant. And that's gonna be B squared minus four times A, which is nine times C. So that's gonna be 144. You can technically do this in your calculator, but this is nine times nine is three times three. Oh, look, what do I get? Zero, yay, which means how many roots is that? Or we can say it's one double root, right? We're not wrong. Um, so there we go. So uh, we're just gonna plug that into the quadratic formula, which is gonna be x equals negative b. So negative 12 plus or minus, well, square root of zero all over two times a. So this is literally going to be negative 12 over 18, which we're going to reduce or simplify. Uh, we're going to make those numbers of what goes into 12 and 18. Two, there's a bigger number, six. So six goes into 12, negative two, and that's going to be three. I only have one root right and negative two thirds. Close to zero, but it's not. Okay. And so um, for your homework today, this is gonna be page 201, one and three, and not one through three, but one and three. I would really try number one, but if you're like, I, I can't miss Lee, I can only do a little bit. I have so much other homework. Like, what about this homework? <laughs> Get no love here in math. So for three, I would maybe try to pick a couple of these and then do it. Because honestly, the homework is for your learning, not for my benefit, right? I already know how to do this stuff, right? This is for you. Can you check to see if you can do it, right? You got, you, that's, how you, that's how you study, right? Doing your homework is part of studying, right? So if you wanna pass, I will tell you, those people who are doing their homework, like legitimately not just filling out the reflection, right? If they're really doing their homework, uh, asking questions when they need to, they are, they're doing a lot better than those people who are not, right? And those people who are doing the exit tickets, they get feedback right away, right? They're like, oh, I got that wrong. Oh, I forgot to put the negative there. So there's that feedback right away. So please make sure you're doing your homework, your exit tickets, how can you pass this class? You'd be like, but Miss Lee, it's not even graded. Well, how are you gonna practice? Like you going to a, a, playing in basketball on a, in a game and like you're never going to practice. Well, the practice is not a real game. Why are you going to practice? Same reason why you do your homework and your exit ticket in, in math class, right? Because you can't automatically assume that on the game, you're gonna all of a sudden be so good, right? On the test, it's just gonna, whoa, and you're gonna be so good, it doesn't work like that. I gotta stop. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.